Seventh Mesa City Council meeting. Uh, we'll begin our meeting with an invocation offered by Father Larry Murta from the Holy Cross Catholic Parish. Following the invocation, we will invite uh, three of the scouts that are visiting our meeting to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. That will be Justin McCall and Reed Van Dusen from Troop 653 and also Wyatt Peterson from Troop 751. So please uh, raise or uh, stand and remain, stand, remain standing for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor, Major Giles. Good evening, uh, council members. Let us begin with prayer. We thank you for the gift of life, Heavenly Father. We thank you for bringing us into this world in order to know, to know you through the beauty of your creation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts of family, health, and healing, which sustain us alongside those we know, love, and serve. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of service through which we are able to use the resources at our disposal to help our fellow man and woman. May we use wisely all our gifts, for they come from you and are meant to serve the common good of our community. Open our minds and hearts to discern wisely and make decisions in good faith for the human and spiritual prosperity of our neighbors and of our community. Heavenly Father, you who alone are the supreme good and who is always good to us, we raise our hearts and minds to you that you may give us the grace to fulfill our civic duties out of love for you and for neighbor. All these things we ask in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Scouts, please come forward. Will you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you, Father Murta, and thank you, Justin and Reed and Wyatt, for getting our meeting started. Uh, the first item on our agenda today are a couple of awards. The first one is a presentation by Council Member Jeremy Whitaker, recognizing the Mesa Public Schools District SciTech Expo. Mr. Whitaker. Thank you. A couple months ago, I was able to attend and present the Best in Show Awards at the Mesa Public Schools SciTech Expo and Science Engineering Fair. It was great to see all the work of the students in Mesa. Tonight, I'm happy to recognize the Best in Fair winners. Adrian Kowalkowski, sorry if I messed your name up, and Katie Gazda. Adrian is in 11th grade at Red Mountain High School. Adrian won Best in Fair for his work that examined one problem researchers have in creating and maintaining stem cells from ad adult cells. Through the training he received in his biotechnology class at Red Mountain High School and the lab space Adrian secured with Biodesign Institute at ASU, he was able to insert a control gene into microscopic nematode worms. This gene, GLD-1, is critical to maintaining early stage stem cells using a version of the gene that was specific to muscle, muscle tissue. Adrian was then able to analyze the gene's protein products. His research focuses on identifying how this gene and its resulting protein interact with possible gene repressors as a potential mechanism to create a stem cell. I'm also happy to recognize Katie Gazda as the Best and Fair Teacher Award. Katie Gazda has been teaching for 10 years, the last four in Mesa Public Schools. In the past two years, she has run the biotechnology program at Red Mountain High School, supplying her students with the skills and knowledge used in current scientific research. Many students have taken their training to the next level and conducted their own research and presented it across the country. Ms. Gazda is so passionate about equipping her students with research skills and mentoring projects because she believes students hold the potential to answer all the questions in our world, and she wants to get them started as soon as possible. Congratulations to both Adrian and Katie. Um, if you guys want to come up to the podium, we can take a picture.
Hank, I can tell that's a very prestigious, prestigious award because I understood exactly nothing uh, <laughs> uh, relative to what the young man's doing. So that, that means he's really smart. Uh, the next presentation we have, uh, I'm going to invite Warren Spretcher from our uh, fire department to come forward and talk about uh, an, a recognition having to do with the National Weather Service. Warren? Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this year, the City of Mesa put in for uh, the storm ready application. That being said, uh, City of Mesa has had this in the past um, under our emergency management area. Uh, it basically acknowledges that City of Mesa as a municipality is ready to deal with any storms or incidents that come up. That being said, I have Ken Waters from the National Weather Service who's going to do a little more detail about what the award is about. So Ken, if you wouldn't mind joining us. Good evening, uh, Council and uh, Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to uh, produce this award tonight. Um, the Storm Ready Program is a basically a, a coordination coordinated program between the National Weather Service and our partners, our communities out there. And it's recognition of strong communication between the Weather Service and the agencies. And I'm very proud uh, of uh, Warren and uh, the city of Mesa. And uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to proclaim that the city of Mesa is storm ready. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody wants to be a part of this, right? Well, why don't we, we'll come down and is there, there's a plaque or something? Yes. Uh -huh. Council, would you like to join me down there and we'll take a photo? <laughs> Great, thanks. Take one for the team. Wow. Great. We're going to uh, stage looking at those guys over okay. there. That works. Very nice. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. You'll find a nice home for that. Home for that. That's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you and congratulations to the folks from uh, the fire department and the other city staff that were involved in this. I think everybody who works for the city, when we see storm clouds uh, gathering, you get a little nervous. And so I, I know that uh, in over the last few years especially, we've worked uh, very hard at uh, storm readiness. So uh, thank you for all the hard work that has gone into this, that, is, that culminates in this, uh, this uh, recognition. We appreciate it. Um, next on our agenda for today is to take action on the consent agenda, and I invite Mr. Kevin Christopher forward to read the consent agenda. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a Council Member or Citizen requests in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. If a citizen wants an item removed, a blue card must be completed and given to the City Clerk prior to the Council's vote on the consent agenda. Item 2, approval of minutes of previous meetings as written. Item 3A, act on liquor license application for 180th Regimental Field Artillery Association. One day event, Saturday, May 19th at the Latin Kitchen, 540 West Broadway Road. Item 3B, act on liquor license application for the National Football Foundation. One day event, Saturday, May 19th at Riverview Park, 2202 West Rio Salado Parkway. Item 3C, act on liquor license application for Rosati's Pizza and Pub, 849 North Dobson Road. Item 4A, act on one-year renewal of the term contract for service recognition awards for city employees as requested by the Human Resources Department. Item 4B, act on three-year term contract for collection services for various city departments as requested by the Business Services Department. Item 4C, act on contract to purchase one replacement light-duty pickup truck for the Fire and Medical Department. Item 4D, act on one-year renewal of the term contract for catering services for the Mesa Convention Center as requested by the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 4E, act on contract for the purchase of a fiber optic expansion for the Mesa Cemetery for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department as requested by the Information Technology Department. 
Item 4F, Act on Contract to Purchase Flow Rider Refurbishment Parts and Services for the Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department. Item 4G, Act on Four-Year Term Contract for Payment Card Acceptance Security Services Solution as requested by the Business Services and Information Technology Departments. Item 4H, Act on One-Year Renewal of the Term Contract for Refuse Roll-Off Containers for the Environmental Management and Sustainability Department. Item 4I, Act on Three-Year Term Contract for Rock and Concrete Materials for Various City Departments. Item 4J, Act on one-year renewal of the term contract for 15 kilovolt aluminum electrical cable for the materials and supply warehouse for the energy resources department. Item 4K, act on contract to purchase one replacement asphalt grinder for the transportation department as requested by the fleet services department. This purchase is funded by the local streets sales tax. Item 4L, act on three-year term contract for pull and valve boxes for the materials and supply warehouse for the water resources and energy resources departments. Item 4M, act on contract for replacement upgrade purchase for virtual desktop infrastructure components for the information technology department. Item 4N, act on contract for the purchase of a fiber optic expansion for the City of Mesa Employee Wellness Center as requested by the information technology department. Item 4O, act on contract to purchase pipe and fittings for the new Signal Butte water treatment plant as requested by the water resources department. Item 4P, act on one-year term contract for repair parts for screw centrifugal pumps for the Water Resources Department. Item 4Q, act on 16-month term contract for water and wastewater equipment repairs and maintenance for the Water Resources Department. Item 5A, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the East Valley Institute of Technology for the design, installation, and maintenance of a decorative lighting system within a public utility and facilities easement. Item 5B, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Arizona Department of Health Services to provide immunization services to the public. Item 5C, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into three separate intergovernmental agreements for the Flood Control District of Maricopa County for the construction, construction management, operation, and maintenance of drainage improvements for three projects. The Flood Control District will fund 75% of the project construction costs incurred for each project. The city will be responsible for funding the remaining cost. Item 5D, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into a new five-year intergovernmental agreement with Maricopa County Department of Emergency Management effective July 1, 2018 to continue regional emergency operations management and disaster services as required by Arizona state statutes. Item 5E, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into a development agreement for city share reimbursement with Legacy Traditional School East Mesa for reimbursement for regional street and street lighting improvements being required by the city in conjunction with the proposed commercial development known as East Guadalupe Road and South Signal Butte Road improvements located at 2836 South Signal Butte Road. Item 5F, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into an agreement with Valley Metro Rail for funding of the Tempe Mesa Streetcar System Study to evaluate transit options linking the cities of Tempe and Mesa. Item 5G, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Town of Gilbert and the Town of Queen Creek for construction and operation of the Greenfield Water Reclamation Plant. The City of Mesa will operate and maintain the plant and the associated costs will be shared by parties of the agreement. Item 6A, Act on Resolution Approving and Authorizing the City Manager to enter into a development agreement with Lynn M. Scott W. and Peggy A. Uri to defer sewer requirements to facilitate development of two residential homes on property located at 1849 South Riker Road. Item 6B, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 17-00324, the 1800 block of South Riker Road located north of Baseline Road on the east side of Riker Road. This is for a rezone and site plan review to allow the land to be divided for the development of detached single residence housing. Item 7A, introduction of ordinance regarding ANX 17-00253, annexation of property located on the 10,600 through 10,800 blocks of East Williamsfield Road. Located south of Williamsfield Road and west of Signal Butte Road, this was initiated by the applicant. <laughs> Item 7B, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 18-00143, the 10,600 through 10,800 blocks of East Williamsfield Road and the 6,000 through 6,200 blocks of South Signal Butte Road, located south of Williamsfield Road and west of Signal Butte Road. 
rezone to establish city zoning on recently annexed property. Item 7C, introduction of ordinance regarding ZON 17-00247, the 10,600 through 11,600 blocks of East Williamsfield Road and the 6,000 through 6,400 blocks of South Signal Butte Road, located on the south side of Williamsfield Road from a quarter mile west of Signal Butte to Meridian Road and located on the east and west sides of Signal Butte Road to approximately one half mile south of Williamsfield Road. Rezone to a plan area development overlay to allow for development of a master plan community. Item 8A, Act on Ordinance, amending sections 10-4-5 and 10-4-6 of the Mesa City Code to establish a speed limit of 35 miles per hour on a proposed section of Cadence Parkway from Ellsworth Road to a point 1,200 feet east of Ellsworth Road and a speed limit of 30 miles per hour from a point 1,200 feet east of Ellsworth Road to Williams Field Road, as recommended by the Transportation Advisory Board. Item 8B, Act on Ordinance, amending sections 10-4-3 and 10-4-5 of the Mesa City Code to modify the boundaries of the current 45 miles per hour speed limit on Crisman Road from the North City limits to Elliott Road and to establish a speed limit of 35 miles per hour on a new section of Crisman Road from Ray Road to Williamsfield Road as recommended by the Transportation Advisory Board. Item 8C, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 17-00580, the 8700 through the 8800 blocks of East Broadway Road located on the south side of Broadway west of the 202 Red Mountain Freeway. Rezone and site plan review to allow for development of a self-storage facility. Item 8B, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 17-00585, the 700 block of West Baseline Road, located on the south side of Baseline, west of Country Club Drive. Site plan modification to allow for development of a medical office. Item 8E, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 17-00591, the 800 block of North Gilbert Road, located on the east side of Gilbert Road, south of Brown Road. Rezone, special use permit, and site plan review to allow for development of a building materials and services facility with accessory outdoor display. Item 8F, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 17-00593, the 7500 block of East Hampton Avenue on the north side, located south of Southern Avenue and west of Sossaman Road. Rezone, council use permit and site plan review to allow for development of a plasma center. Item 8G, Act on Ordinance, amending section 11-31-34 of the Mesa Zoning Ordinance pertaining to the establishment and operation of medical marijuana facilities. Items 9A, 9B, and 9C are for continuance to the August 20th City Council meeting. Mayor and Council members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Ms. Mickelson, have there been any requests to speak on an item on the consent agenda? Okay. I note that the electronic, oh wait, we have motions that have now been made electronically. So the motion was made by Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Glover for the approval of the consent agenda. Please cast your vote. The vote is unanimous in favor of the consent agenda. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 10, that is to take action on a resolution submitting to the voters of Mesa at the November 6th election the question of increasing the city's transaction privilege tax by 0.25% from 1.75 to 2.0, beginning on March 1st, 2019. The increase will be used for the sole purpose of funding Mesa Police and Mesa Fire and Medical. Mr. Brady. Um, I know we've had presentations on this in our study sessions and uh, to get it to this point, but can you summarize for us what this proposal is? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so um, I'm just gonna cover some of the highlights and then I would like to invite um, Chief Bautista from the police department to come forward and maybe give perspective from the police department and also Assistant Chief James Johnson from the fire department to kind of share with you and with the public um, the need uh, for the additional personnel. Um, the police and medical police department and the fire, medical, fire and medical departments are both facing similar challenges. We're experiencing significant growth throughout the city. Uh, we're, with that has come the increased calls for service. And with that, we've also experiencing increased um, calls related to mental health. As we know, the city has been growing not only in population and numbers, uh, but geographically it continues to spread out across the city. And this becomes more and more of a challenge for our um, police and fire personnel to be able to respond in a timely manner. Oops. Uh, this uh, slide here shows that uh, currently the allocation of the um, little over eight and a half, eight percent that is collected um, in the sales tax by the city of Mesa where it currently is allocated to. Um, this is the total amount that is collected for someone who's making a purchase in Mesa. Uh, most of that 5.6% uh, goes to the state. 
as it looks towards just the local sales tax in Mesa. Here's a chart that shows how that is currently um, the rates that are used, both for the general fund, which is the gen general purpose fund of the city, and then we have a dedicated quality of life sales tax, which today goes only towards uh, funding police and fire positions, and then a local street sales tax, which goes towards funding street improvements and street maintenance in the city of Mesa. You can see that that local percentage is one and three quarters, which we estimate in the 1819 forecast to be just over $170 million. Uh, again, we show the proposed idea of increasing the sales tax from 1.75% to 2%, a quarter percent rate adjustment. And in this uh, slide, we show uh, what those collections are forecasted to be. The first year is only a partial year because collections would not start until March. Uh, but just an idea that we would, the quarter cent would generate approximately a $25 million in additional revenues for public safety purposes. We propose that if this is approved, that we um, split the uh, funds approximately about 60-40 uh, between the police department and the fire department. And this gives us an estimate of how those dollars would be split that are received each year uh, through this additional sales tax increase. We've uh, done a calculation to determine how many positions that this would fund over a period of time. It would take uh, four to, uh, five to six years or so to hire all of these positions and to have all of them in place, along with the positions that will continue to replace uh, for the, from retirements and other uh, separations from the city. So we estimate, again, that the police department would have approximately 65 positions by the time we were able to uh, ramp up and hire all these positions, and the fire and medical would be about 45 positions. We believe the need is a little bit greater than this for both of these departments, but this would provide a significant um, number of positions that would deal with the greatest uh, challenges we have with growth and response time. Uh, during those times that we would be um, hiring the positions, we would use the sales tax dollars uh, and for other um, improvements uh, related to training, uh, related to um, those equipment and vehicle purchases that are necessary to support our public safety personnel. So, Mayor, at this time, unless you have questions for me, uh, it would be appropriate for me to invite the uh, police chief to come forward, and then we'll invite Assistant Chief James Johnson just to share with you their perspective on the need for additional personnel. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Any questions for Mr. Brady, Council? <coughs> Thank you. Chief, welcome. Mr. Mayor, good evening, dear Council, city staff. I support this plan. Uh, we are a large city and getting larger, and as Mr. Brady noted, uh, that increase in the population is driving the calls, the number of calls that we're responding to. So as an example, uh, we responded to 10,000 more calls between 2015 and 2017. And as we forecast this out, we are going to obviously have more people in our population and thus that will drive the call load higher. Um, we know about the mental health related calls. Uh, in all actuality, the total number of health related, mental health related calls uh, grew by almost 50% between 2014 and 2017. Uh, in 2017, we responded to a total of over 6,300 calls for service involving situations where we were um, assisting folks that were going through mental crisis. So uh, in addition to that, I would say that we also need to be uh, considering the fact that as a large city, uh, we have to find better balance between the west side and the east side. Uh, we've got a uh, patrol district on the east side that is quite large, and I think that we need to begin to think about how we redistrict and how we realign the boundaries uh, between the, uh, the city as it stands today, uh, because I do believe that we need to be at a point of having a discussion down the road where we talk about a, uh, another patrol district on the northeast side of town in order to attain better balance between the east and the west. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. I appreciate that. Council, any questions for Chief Batista? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council, City Staff. Uh, James Johnson, Assistant, C Assistant Chief, uh, Mesa Fire Department. Um, much like my counterpart said, we have a large increase in demand for service. Uh, we're increasing our demand by 7% per year. Um, very similarly, on the east side, we have a response time, travel time, 
it takes longer to get to calls. The city's growing, the population's growing. On the west side, we have a demand, a high volume of calls that is a challenge to get to. So the increase in sales tax is going to help us uh, hire uh, additional folks. We hope to add two new fire stations, uh, 13 firefighters per station. And additionally, uh, we are always looking at alternative response models that we can use to better serve our community. And just finally, our ultimate goal is to keep the community safe. And, and that's what we want to do. And we hope and look forward to the sales tax to help provide that service. Thank you very much. Any questions, Council? Thank you very much. Thank you. One observation I'd like to share with the, uh, the mayor and the council as well as the community. Um, the last time we increased the um, sales tax for public safety purposes was about 2006, I believe. And if you think about what was happening in Mason in 2006, there was a lot of growth, a lot of development. And of course, then we kind of hit the recession in a slow period of time. We can show you, and you've seen this today, uh, over the last couple of years, Mesa has seen tremendous growth again. Uh, we're issuing more permits in almost any city in the state. Uh, we have some of the fastest growing subdivisions in the country. And obviously, uh, now we're kind of back at that point where we got tremendous growth. And we believe that this is an important way to help address that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Uh, we do have a few qu requests to speak. Uh, folks have uh, filed blue cards on this topic. The first is from Mr. Dale Krogan. Dale, we'd invite you to come forward. Hello, uh, Dale Krogan, 52 South Center. Um, I'm really here tonight to thank you, Mayor, and, and all of the council members and city management, not only for recognizing that there's an issue, but actually for coming up with a plan to how we're going to address the issue. Um, as both Chief Batista and Chief Donson said, and uh, Chris Brady for that matter, uh, the growth in the city has been incredible. Maricopa County is the fastest growing uh, county in the nation, and I think Mesa leads the pace in that, uh, both from the southeast and the north, excuse me, the northeast. Um, so I think coming up with a plan on how we're going to deal with that growth. Uh, city manager just talked about data that has been provided to you all. Um, the data that has come back to us has shown that since 2008, we've seen a 40% increase in call volume in the city of Mesa. Uh, matter of fact, in the first quarter of 2018, we've seen the 10 busiest weeks on record for the fire department. Uh, the data also projects that we're going to see a 20,000 annual increase in unit responses by 2022. That's just on the fire side. If we don't keep up with this pace, our quality of service is gonna start being affected. It's already starting to affect our response times in certain areas. We're having to work harder to maintain ourselves than when it comes to that national standard on response times. So I stand up here saying thank you. I stand up here saying that we support this tax. I stand up here saying that I think this tax is what's needed in order to address some of these issues moving forward. We need the manpower, whether it be on the west side, like Chief Johnson said, or Chief Batista said, or whether it be the distances on the east side. Uh, the bottom line is, I think moving forward, this is what's going to help us maintain the highest level of quality, or the highest quality care uh, for public safety here in Mesa. So standing up here with, as a representative of the firefighters, uh, we support this tax and we say thank you. Thank you, Dale. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for the, your organization's good work in our community. Appreciate it. Uh, next, Nate Gafford. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'd like to echo my counterpart, uh, Dale, in the appreciation for coming up with a good plan and moving forward on this. Uh, I'm Nate Gaffert, president of the Mesa Police Association. Uh, the Mesa Police Association represents over 600 employees within the police department. As you know, both police and fire are in desperate need of, of funding for personnel, which is why we're really pushing this tax. The MPA fully supports this tax increase, and we are confident that the language will be very clear to outline that every dollar will go directly towards police and fire. As our great city grows in population and the cost of public safety increases, we know that a, a stable source of revenue is needed to keep up with the best services we can provide to our citizens. We are excited and, looking, and look forward to working with the city leadership to get this passed. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Nate. Uh, next, we have Will Biascacheo. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council Members and Mr. Brady. 
Um, my name is Will Biascochea. I am currently the president of Mesa Lodge 9 Fraternal Order of Police. Our organization represents the police officers and professional police staff members throughout the city. I am addressing you today regarding the proposed sales tax increase in support of our brave men and women of public safety. As all of you know, societal demands for our public safety members have increased tremendously over the years while at the same time facing uncertain budgets and loss percentile, as everybody here has discussed. During these times, our members have performed and continue to perform exceptionally. They ensure the safety of all the citizens of this great city. Unfortunately, performing at this level without adequate personnel and funding has placed an enormous strain on our members and it has become apparent which will not be sustainable. We are quickly approaching a critical point where the citizens of Mesa will begin to feel the impact the service they provide. Moreover, public safety is the barrier between chaos and calmness. These men and women are dedicated to protecting and serving the community in which they live and work. They only ask for adequate and reasonable support. Because Mesa is one of the fastest growing cities in terms of commerce and residency, we are experiencing a dramatic increase to its population and growth. At the current rate, our members will not be able to keep up with the ever increasing growth, which will ultimately place citizens and public safety members in undesirable situations. I'm here to represent those members. And for these reasons, the Mesa Lodge 9 Fraternal Order Police wholly support this initiative. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members, for your continual support. Thank you very much, Will. Thank you. Council, uh, discussion on this item? Uh, I, I can kick things off by saying that I, I assure the voters of Mesa, Arizona, that this is not something that we are proposing uh, without a, a great deal of due diligence. Uh, we have been uh, studying uh, the need to do this for a long period of time. Uh, over the last month, we've had budget hearings uh, at the city council level where, where both are our good uh, chiefs have come in and talked about their staffing levels, the, the fact that we are a very safe community, and, and we can be very proud of that. And we can be very proud of the fact that we have two very elite public safety uh, departments uh, serving the city of Mesa. But in order to stay ahead of that curve and to remain a very safe community, uh, we need to make some substantial increases in our public safety personnel. And uh, growth is great, but growth is not free. Uh, we have to... Uh, to provide the resources that are necessary to, to continue for this to be a community that attracts so many people and, and that can remain very, very safe. So uh, I wholeheartedly endorse uh, this proposal and looking forward to campaigning for it and explaining the need for it uh, to our voters over the next uh, several months leading up to the November election. Um, is there additional comment or is there a, a motion? I'm sorry, thank you, I'll pay attention. Mr. Luna has made the motion and Mr. Glover has seconded the motion. Council, please vote. And, and Mayor, just for the record, it's clear from the study session, the motion is to, to approve the revised resolution as discussed at the study session. Thank you very much for uh, reminding me of that. Yes, there was, there was a, a revised document that was posted today uh, with, uh, with language and that is uh, the, um, just to confirm Mr. Luna, that is the motion that you made, correct? That's correct. And Mr. Glover, thank you very much. Uh, all have voted and uh, it's unanimous uh, in favor of uh, calling the election and uh, making this proposal to our voters. So thank you to city staff and particularly to our public safety departments for all the work that you've put in to, uh, to make clear the need for this, uh, this action. Uh, the next item on our agenda for this meeting is items from citizens present. Ms. Mickelson, I have received two blue cards. If you have, do you have any others? Okay, the, the first that we will invite up then is Mr. J.B. Welcome, sir. Uh, we have three minutes for thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thoughts with us. Uh, appreciate it. Mr. Thompson, thank you for your time today. And Mr. Whitaker, I believe I'm in your district. And Councilman, I appreciate your time today as we discuss things, and I'm rather surprised that I came back. I hope, I, won't, I probably won't take the whole three minutes. I would appreciate you looking at the two pages that I've left with you. Uh, I did receive a phone call from Detective Hire of the uh, Mesa Police Department to inform me that noise ordinances would no longer be enforced against uh, golf courses. And uh, that uh, uh, they're getting special attention on this. It concerns me, and why I'm back here today is after having met today with Councilman, 
I read your mission statement, and your mission statement says, the Mesa City Council believes that its people, not its leaders, are what makes the city great and actively works to encourage citizen participation in the decision-making process, whether it is through neighborhood meetings, advisory boards, and committees, telephone calls, et cetera. You want us involved. So when I'm told that the police department received a phone call from the commission to say quit enforcing this ordinance, it concerns me. I would like you to have due process. I would like you to enforce the laws on the book. When they wake me up at 4.30 in the morning mowing, it's not reasonable. I'm a vet. I don't want to be awake. I have to set my alarm prior to them starting their machines because of the anxiety it causes me. I don't mind waking up at 4.30 if I have to. I just have to make sure I wake myself up and their machines don't wake me up. So I would appreciate it if you would enforce the laws on the book. I support the police department, the fire department. I don't like calling them for noise problems. They've got much more on their plight than, than a noise problem at 4.30 in the morning. Officer Forrester did respond recently to me, and he says, you're a low priority, and I said, absolutely I am. He said, if you'll take a video of them mowing, I'll accept that when we get out later in the day and give them a citation for it. But that's not even possible now because I've, I've been told enforcement is no longer an option. So please consider it as you move forward. Um, perhaps in lightening the load of our officers, we could have an ordinance um, officer who only deals with ordinance violations, code violations, and where we don't have to be calling a police department at 4.30 in the morning or some other time. I know I don't qualify for special consideration. I know if I have a lot of noise, I'm going to get cited or at least warned and then cited. So please take time to read the, the notes that I've provided and um, hopefully it's addressed in the future. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming and sharing your concerns. Unfortunately, because this isn't on our agenda, we can't uh, respond directly to I that. understand that completely. But I, I do know that staff is aware of your concerns and that it, they'll be addressed. Well, I, I appreciate and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we have Christopher Bone. Thank you, Mayor and Council. My name is Christopher Bone. I'm um, 3027 South Pennington. Um, again, my name is Christopher Bound and I need your help. I hold a bachelor's degree in accounting from NAU. I have a master's in accounting. I teach accounting both academically and professionally. I've worked in the accounting industry at various levels for over 20 years, but I don't understand how this ASU campus is a good deal for Mesa residents. I need your help. As I'm canvassing District 3, I keep getting questions that I can't answer. Like why does Mesa have one of the highest rates for utilities, but increasing them seems like a reasonable response to raising funds for ASU campus downtown. I need your help. As they also ask, does it make sense for a building owner to charge less than market rates for a building and ask the residents to pick up the difference so that we can increase traffic and congestion? I need your help. The people of District 3 want to know why the downtown, why the downtown was selected instead of an urban infill that is available in other districts. Did we even approach the Fiesta Mall owners? <clears throat> I need your help. How can I explain that if it turns out to be a bad deal for Mesa, three to four generations of Mesa residents um, will have to deal with the consequences of the deal because it's a 99 year lease. <clears throat> I need your help explaining the accounting that you, Mayor, Councilman, have used to justify that this is a positive proposition for the city. And remember, I'm an accountant. I need your help. I'm running for District 3 City Council seat, and I feel it would be a hollow victory to win just because, your count, because of you, Councilman, voting for this rate hike for dubious reasons. Mayor and Council, maybe this is a good deal for the city, of, uh, for the city but they need your help in understanding this, and if I can't as an accountant, I need your help. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Thank you for being here. 
Uh, that concludes the items on our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Thank you, Mr. Glover. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>